So I just had another go at crushing up this glass. Um, same technique, so metal pot, uh, big iron rod, and steel tube. And um, I just kept going for a while, and um, that was actually pretty fine, um, as in acceptable, and also fine. Um, there's some minor dirt contamination in there, um, mainly because the bottom of that is dirty, and the inside of this is dirty. But those are solvable problems, and um, you know, that's good enough for my purposes. Um, I'm going to run a couple of batches, so I've got all this um, big flat glass, um, that's float glass, so that's made by floating a layer of molten glass on a layer of molten tin. But I've also got some um, glass containers that I picked up cheap, and this is blown glass, and so it's different composition, um, it's coated in this stainless effect plastic coating. But um, I think I might try a batch with this stuff and see how it goes because it might be better or worse for my purposes because um, float glass has got a lot of additives and is, is formulated for that particular process whereas this stuff is much closer to what you'd use if you were casting something. Um, so maybe because I am effectively casting something this, this glass would be a better choice. Um, don't know, we'll see. Okay. Bye bye. I have the furnace all set up. <coughs> Not on yet. So in here, I've got two stainless steel containers, both lined with kiln wash or bat wash. Uh, this one's got a smashed up cast glass or blowing glass pot, I mean container thing jug, and this one's got smashed up um, float glass. I washed this one with water and then shook, 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 pour it off to get rid of all the really fine particulate stuff. I didn't do that for this one for no particular reason, I only mention it for um, consistency's sake. Um, so I've had to do a bit of, so this has got a OS PID um, replacement for the original electronics. The old electronics just had a ramp um, value, so you, you turn the dial to the degrees per minute you want and you, you go. And it goes. Um, and then you can use this switch to say hold at that temperature. Um, so I replaced it with this thing. Um, so I've had to do a bit of archaeology. I dug up this unkillable Dell D620, uh, which is what I used many moons ago to write the profiles for this thing. And it still runs amazingly once I found the power supply. Um, so I wanted to do that because I'd made long ago the profiles to do um, glass slumping and tempering. And so this is the profile I'm going to use. So I loaded the software into my main desktop. Um, so it, what does it do? Um, it ramps to 300 at 7200 degrees per second. So it just goes bang straight to 300. Wait till it hits 300. And then it goes to 600 and then 700, and then 820, and then up to 830, and then it drops down to 510 for a while, some period of time, then goes up to 520 and back down to zero, so off. I don't exactly know, or I don't remember the um, science behind any of this, but I know that it works. It, it, uh, I tempered some float glass with this, and it worked amazingly well. Um, so I'm hoping that I'll get similar results this time around. So to program it, I've just run a USB cable up and over and down, and then I stuffed a bit of stuffed a rag in there to keep the dust out because my computer's inside this big box. So I'll write that uh, profile in, and I'll run it, and we'll see how we go. Okay, bye bye. So the top number, the S, is the set point and I is indicated so we've got a little bit of overshoot here but that's not too bad and so at present to hit the desired ramp the output percentage is a 46% duty cycle so this is running through that uh, slump profile I programmed in earlier 
And so originally this thing had a um, big solid contactor in the back that would go bang, 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 bang. We replaced it with a solid state relay so it's silent. Um, it's really hot, this thing, on the outside. It's got a uh, yay, let's say 100mm of um, insulation inside. Um, the top is touchable. Uh, I'd estimate like 40 degrees, perfectly fine. The sides, hear that? See my fingerprint? Uh, are much hotter. 132 degrees. Um, so I don't know if that's to be expected. Um, it's always been hot on the outside, you know, it's a furnace or a kiln. Um, but I'm wondering how much heat is it losing. Like I can feel heat convecting off this just roiling up into the air. Um, so I might like get a, a blanket like a glass wool blanket and wrap it around there to make it a bit more efficient. Um, let's see if we can have a peek through the wee hole here. Uh, the infrared won't hurt my camera too much. Ah, should be right. Ooh, it's glowy in there. You can see the balls. Right, I'll pop that back up. So this is, yeah, as I mentioned previously, this is uh, my mum's old furnace. Here's the furnace that I built. Uh, it's considerably less high tech. Arrgh! It's extremely heavy. It's made from a refractory cement, which is like Portland cement, vermiculite, perlite, uh, terracotta grog, and a bunch of stuff mixed up, poured in there, and it runs with LPG. But I can't get any sort of precise control with that. Whereas this, I get really precise control. So, I don't know. This is definitely better in every regard. But, yeah, should be right. Hmm, outside temperature is still rising. It was 120 when I put this on before, about 5 minutes ago, or 10 minutes ago. Hmm, yeah, I might sort out some sort of additional layer of um, insulation. I don't know if the insulation in this stuff degrades over time. It might do, it might have a big crack in it. Weirdly, the heating coils are embedded into the insulation inside there. Um, so when I pop this off, let's have another look. You can see there's glowing coils in the back there. Um, so that's the glow coming through the insulation on the inside. So there appears to be a thick layer of insulation, then the coils, and then another layer of insulation on the inside. So, I don't know why that is. I'm sure there's a good reason. Anyway. Ah, here's something I tried a long time ago. This little curl pot I made and I was testing out this glaze. It's very tricky to get a uniform layer of this glaze. And with that it's sort of pooling and also it's also very dirty, but you can see that it's cracked on the inside. I think this might have actually had a few a few passes of glaze. And the glaze is uh, this stuff. Focus. Deco Superior Clear Glaze. That's the stuff. Okay, bye bye. Alrighty, it's quarter past eleven and this should be finished ish. Set point zero degrees, current temperature 308. Alright, let's have a look ski. It's gonna be hot in there. Ooh, it's melted. Very good. Um, I might actually let it cool down fully overnight. So I'll turn it off and I'll have a peek in the morning. Um, because I don't want the glass to cool too quickly because it'll crack and it's bad for the insulation to cool down too quickly. So I'll leave the plugs out so there's a little bit of passive ventilation and uh, let it cool down. I'll have a look in the morning. Right, it's 10 hours later. What temperature is it in there? 30 degrees, so I can handle that. Alright, let's have a look. Hmm, interesting. 
interesting. So the bat wash is all flaked off. The stainless bowl has gone black. Looks like I really need to wash this. It's like all of the tiny bits of dirt that got it that ended up in the mixture have discoloured it somewhat. Oh, and there are some bubbles in there, but some bubbles and some grit and stuff. So I need a, a cleaner process. It's still overall transparent. I would say that's good enough for um, blinky light designs. Not great for screen screen based designs. Let's see if this comes out. That's the core thing, isn't it? Whoa, look at that. It came out. Oh, it's heavy. Heavier than I thought it would be. Right. Very bubbly. Come on. You've got nothing else to focus on. Why not focus on the thing that's in the center of your field of view? There we go. Hmm. Interesting. So I'm wondering how much of the opaqueness is um, just surface haze and how much is stuff on the inside. Um, interesting. This one is much, much better than this one. Let's see if this one comes out. Not on the first try. Hey, second try. Interesting. So it looks like some of the, the contaminants have floated to the top and some have gone to the bottom. So this one was the float glass, um, which wasn't washed, so it looks like washing is a necessary step after crushing to remove all the fine particulate matter. Um, but I think I need to wash more thoroughly. Um, yeah, I think I should have like a, a maximum and a minimum size on the uh, frit. Interesting. That's really terrible. Um, so, but these are two different types of glass, but I fired them with the same profile. So maybe there's also some room for improvement there. But, um, yeah, actually you can still see that there's grains in this one, like it didn't um, fully melt, didn't fully merge, whereas this one doesn't appear to have any of those sort of macro scale grains, it appears to be smooth. Um, so I want to take some photos of these, um, grind down the edges, and then do some drop tests how well they tempered. Um, my plan for the drop test is just to set up that on concrete and then have some mechanism that would evenly release at the top so it falls down towards the ground that way it's a set distance that it falls and the tube will catch all the fragments when they explode. Okay, exciting. Bye bye.